YouTube, it's Eileen again. I am doing this look for you guys today. This is a vintage inspired look. It's very soft, very girly, and quite rosy and romantic. I really love it. It's one of my go-to looks when I just want to look a little bit more glamorous without overdoing it. Um, I wear mine with glasses typically, but here's what it looks like without. It's an entire matte face with a rosy cheek a matte lip, and a soft brown eye. Stay tuned if you like it, and I'll show you how to do it. Have a good one. Back with a clean face, uh, thoroughly moisturized. I gave it some time to soak in. Now I'm going to take my glasses off. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do for this look, I'm going to keep it very pale and matte. So I'm going to use the NYX Incredible Waterproof Concealer for my circles, my dark circle. Now this is okay to use underneath your foundation because it's waterproof. Um, it's actually a little bit difficult to get off when you're trying to get it off. So a good sign. This is what I took for um, a music festival when I didn't want to look gross <laughs> because it just doesn't budge. All right, I'm just going to blend it in with my fingers. Um, typically I use my beauty blender but I'm not going to for this product just because it is so waterproof. I don't want a whole lot of product left on my beauty blender if you know what I mean. Softly blend this stuff in. I love the smell of this. I don't know what it is. It almost smells like, I don't know, tea tree oil or eucalyptus, but not quite. I have no idea what it smells like, but I like it. Alright. Got a little bit of redness on my cheeks, just from like a little dry patch. Alright, so for foundation, I have the L'Oreal True Match in Porcelain W1. It's a warm color. I don't think it's that warm. It's the lightest color they have. This stuff is very matte. And, yes, depending on how you put it on, it can be a medium to full coverage. I wouldn't call it all on full color coverage, but somewhere in the middle, you know? Try to get it around my nostrils really well and just buff it into the skin. So the part that kind of slows down and you kind of take your time with to make sure everything's even. Especially if you're anything like I am. I don't like a lot of foundation on my face because I feel like if you put too much on throughout the day, it will kind of like creep into all of the little nooks and crannies in your face. And when you have dry skin, that's really not a good look. All right, so I'm going to take this right over my under eye, just to lightly blend it, whatever's left on my beauty blender. Just kind of go underneath the brow a little bit. I love this foundation. I've heard good things about the Lumi foundation that they have, but every time I go to the store, I never ever have a color that's light enough. It's always like the slot is there, but it's missing itself bums me out. Now I typically go right over my mouth just because I don't want like a line. And then I'll put like chapstick on later and I'll kind of like move it off my lips a little bit. So I'm going to do my eyebrows like I normally do with my Anastasia Brow Wiz and drop something. The pomade. I always start by combing these through. So that I can kind of cheat the shape a little bit. And so I can get to the hairs better, you know? And I go straight out. These eyebrows are not for the faint of heart. Take a little bit of practice. But I really like the way they look on my face, to be honest. If I didn't 
tweeze my eyebrows when I was, you know, high school or middle school, I'd probably have pretty straight brows. Not quite this straight, but I was going to say almost blocky, so. I almost feel like... Just go with it, right? So with my dip brow, yeah, my dip brow, brow pomade, I'm just going to pull this color. This is in the color taupe, and the color I did on my eyebrow was soft brown. Um, I honestly don't see much of a tonal difference unless they're just on your skin, but in my eyebrow they kind of look similar. Um, but this is just the easier product to work with. And it's a tiny bit softer. If I had to guess, I would say the soft brown is uh, like a half a shade darker and a tiny bit warmer. Which isn't a bad thing. I guess I could use it for my entire brow. Especially on days that I have dirty hair because my hair looks a little bit darker than it naturally is. There she blows. So I, I do like to keep it a little bit of an arch because I do have this like pretty hard point on my eyebrow, but see the bottom is kind of straight and out. I'm gonna do the other one off camera. Those are both brows. Um, well, I think I did a pretty good job. I'm glad that I did the second one off camera because honestly, it gave me a little bit of trouble. I have this dry patch right here and does not make for good eyebrow days. Still haven't found my Anastasia brow gel, but it's kind of a tiny tube, so I feel like my cats probably got a hold of it and was like kicking it around. They do that sometimes, and then I'll find it underneath a chair or stashed in a corner somewhere. Kind of brushing up and out of the way. I like a texture brow in front. It's not for you. It's not for you. So I think the only eyeshadow palette that I'm going to use the entire time is going to be the Sonia Kashuk mm -mm, Eye on Neutral. It's a really good palette if you need a good natural colored palette. With my big fluffy brush, I'm just going to take the lightest color, which is almost white. And... All of these are matte, which I love. I'm just going to take it in here to brighten up that area. And softly brush it through the back of my eyelid. Or crease. And I'm going to take it underneath my eye. Because, I don't know if I mentioned this, I don't think I did. I didn't take the concealer all the way up to my eyelash on the bottom. Um, when I do that, I get really bad creasing, so I stopped doing it. So that, this color was sort of, just kind of brighten everything, neutralize it more than anything. And by putting down a foundation, or a base color, you will save so much time blending later. Underneath my eye. Looks good, I like it. Oh, I got a hair on my face. Boop. Okay. This look is a lot about the cheeks. <clears throat> so in vintage makeup, you often got like a nice rosy pink color on the cheeks, and it was always matte. I think sometimes they use their lipsticks as rouge, so it might be like a, a sheen on it, but never like a glitter or a shimmer. I'm not even sure if they had those back then. So for today, I've chosen the Sonia Kashuk in Flamingo. It's a cool toned uh, pink, pink color. So on other days, I actually used the NYC blush in Peach. It's really close. Honestly, this isn't super peachy, especially on the skin. You can see the difference. They're pretty close. I used to always use this one, but for some reason, I just love this Sonia Kashuk. So, with an MUA blush brush, I'm just going to lightly start this at the ball of my cheeks, or the apple. 
can kind of work it back. Now, people didn't really do contouring in the 40s and the 50s, so they let their blush do most of the work. Now, that doesn't mean go heavy on the blush. It just means put it where it needs to go. Do the same thing to the other cheek. It's like a really soft and girly look. I really like it because I tend to do like soft makeup because I am heavily tattooed. Um, I really like the... I don't want to use the word contrast because that's not the right word. I don't know, I like how soft things look with hard things. Let's just go that way. Or feminine things look with masculine things. Not saying tattoos are masculine at all. Sometimes I wear like, you know, a nice pair of trousers and like a studded shoe or something. All right, I think that's good on the cheeks. I might put a little bit more on this side. Just to kind of really hone in that shape. And for any reason you went too heavy on the blush, take a clean, um, brush with that you would normally use for blush and just kind of go on both sides and back and forth. What I typically do after all my blushes actually is I just to give it a better shape I'll take my beauty blender again and I'll run that line right underneath and alongside my cheekbone to clean it up. Doesn't give you a harsh line but it kind of just defines everything a little bit further. Let's move on to eyeshadow. I have the e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. I'm not sure what C means. Let's pretend it means color. And I'm going to use a just straight up medium brown. Right there. Sometimes I use this peachier color and sometimes I use the orangey color, but typically I just go for a straight up flat flat as in matte, um, brown. I just pack it on the brush, blow off any excess, and then I pack it on the mobile lid. Make sure you guys can see it. As long as it's a matte brown, you can go like a shade darker. There is a, I want to say it's CoverGirl eyeshadow that sometimes I use for this. It's called Burnt Toast. Oh, it's a beautiful color. It's like a darker brown, but when you blend it out, it almost has like an orange look to it. Now, because I have kind of a hooded eye, I guess deep side, I don't know what I have. I go a little bit higher. On the lid. Give myself a very rounded eye. Find any kind of brush like this. And I go around the outside and I lightly blend across. See how it kind of softly blended it out? I do purposefully bring it like across the bridge of my nose. Just kind of something I do of habit because I like the shape it gives the bridge of my nose and it's super subtle because you already have eyeshadow there. I'm gonna do the other one and then I'll be back. Alright, there's both eyeshadows. Now I'm not gonna go underneath my eye. If you want to, you're welcome to. I just think that typically vintage uh, makeup is focused on the top. They like a heavier lid. I like it because I have a heavy lid. And I like it because it sort of brightens your under eyes. So with your favorite black pencil, I'm just going to use the Urban Decay, I think it's 24-7, swiped off, glide off pencil in the color zero. Just going to go into the top water line. What this does is it kind of makes you look like you have a thicker lash line. It gets messy. Don't sweat it. Because I'm going to take my same, oops, not that messy. <laughs> I'm going to take my same brush that I use for my eyeshadow and kind of blur out that line if you did go above the lash line. Ugh. There. See how that kind of defines it? 
makes a huge difference once you have mascara on. Might not look like it now. So yeah, I'm gonna take that same brush that I used for my eyeshadow and kind of smudge whatever you have going on up there, if anything. I tend to because I'm kind of rough with it. I don't know why. I don't really get in there. It usually just sits on my waterline and I want it on the lash line. Alright, so now I'm just going to move on to mascara. So I'm not going to do my eyeliner. My liquid eyeliner. Because, to be honest, for everyday looks, you don't really see that cat eye. That's kind of like a nice going out type of look. It look a little bit fancy. So I'm going to use the Urban Decay Perversion. I'm going to give my eyelashes a very nice coat of mascara. I hate when this is on the flip side. I try to ignore it for as long as I can, you know, the magnifying side, but... Drives me nuts! There's one eye, I'll do the other one off camera. Now, now is typically when I powder. I'm not gonna do that today because my skin is just so dry. Like, the foundation just set nicely for me anyway, so I'm not gonna bother. Now, I did put chapstick in the beginning, but I should do it again. I just don't have any on hand. So you're gonna have to excuse my chapped lips. So for this look, though, I'd like to use the Revlon Color Burst Matte Balm in the color Sultry. This is a beautiful color. It's really close to being red without being red. Somewhere in between a mauve pink and a red. So it's super wearable and I feel like it has kind of a vintage color to it. It's one of my favorite colors to wear. It's just gorgeous. Also, if you want to get the lip shape correct, go for a nice rounded Cupid's bow. So there's the finished look. Uh, today I'm actually going to wear it with glasses because I'm going to work and prefer to wear glasses to work. And my glasses are dirty, but let's try to ignore that. So there it is, a nice vintage look with a matte lip and a matte face. Very pale, no contouring. <laughs> I quite like it. Very girly. So if you like this video, please show your support by liking it. Or you can subscribe to me and I will try to make more lovely videos like this. I do tend to go towards the vintage side, so I hope you enjoy that. And, um, you know, let me know what you think. And I'll see you soon. Have a great day.